In this video, I'm going to talk about how to make a sine wave oscillator circuit using a motor, an inductor, two capacitors, a resistor, and a battery. Now, there are other more effective ways of creating a sine wave oscillator using transistors and operational amplifiers, and even the 555 timer IC circuit. For those of you who do want to see those other methods, I'm going to be posting some links in the description section below of this video. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. So let's get on with this circuit. The first thing that we need is a battery. Now for this circuit, I'm using a six volt battery, but the measured voltage across the terminals turned out to be 5.5. Now attached to the positive terminal of this battery is an inductor. This is a 10 millihenry inductor, but its measured inductance was 9.38 millihenries. The internal resistance was measured to be 24 ohms. Now, parallel to this inductor and a battery, I have a motor connected to it. Now, there's different types of motors that you could use for this circuit. If you decide to use a small fast spinning motor you're going to get a frequency in the kilohertz range and not only that but you'll get a highly spiked distorted waveform which is not what we want in the circuit if you want to get a nice sine wave at the output i recommend using a larger slow spinning motor because they tend to be more stable and they also produce a more stable frequency the fast spinning motors, the frequency will vary widely. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Thus, the performance of this circuit as a sine wave oscillator depends on the type of motor that you choose. So make sure to choose a large, slow spinning motor. Now, connected to the motor, we're going to have a capacitor. The capacitor that I chose to use was a 1000 microfarad capacitor but the measured capacitance was 960 microfarads. The purpose of this capacitor is to block the DC power source from flowing into this part of the circuit, but to pass the AC signal that's generated by a motor. Capacitors are used to block DC, but they will pass an AC signal. And anytime a motor spins, it will create and induce EMF and that induce EMF which is basically a voltage variant signal can oscillate back and forth between the two metal plates of the capacitor. Now connected to that capacitor is another capacitor. I chose to use a 220 microfarad capacitor but the measured capacitance was 209 microfarads. The purpose of this capacitor is to filter out any high frequency spike signals that we may get as the motor spins. The low frequency signals will pass through, but the high frequency signals will be filtered out. The net result is that we get a more stable sine wave output. And connected across that is a resistor. In this example, I chose to use a one kilo ohm resistor. Now my voltmeter and my oscilloscope will be connected across the one kilo ohm resistor. So in this circuit, the output was a decent sine wave. It wasn't perfect, but nevertheless, for the most part, it looked like a sine wave. The output voltage peak to peak was measured approximately 75 millivolts and the output frequency now this varied when I first tested a circuit it was 240 Hertz and when I tried it another time it was around 250 and 260 but according to the clip that I'm about to show you next it was roughly around 260 Hertz
So as you saw in that demonstration, this circuit does work. We did get a sine wave. It's not a, a perfectly stable sine wave. It fluctuated a bit, but it works. And the frequency initially was 260 hertz at the beginning of the video. And then towards the end, it went up to 264 hertz. So the circuit is not perfectly stable, but the fluctuations have been reduced compared to using a faster spinning motor. Now let's talk about the frequency calculations of this circuit. The resonant frequency of the circuit can be calculated using this formula. It's 1 divided by 2 pi times the square root of LC, where L is the inductance of the inductor, C is the capacitance of the capacitor. Now in the first part of the circuit, you can redraw it this way. The inductor was connected to the positive term of a battery and the motor was connected across the battery and the inductor. The motor has its own internal inductance. And for that motor, it was measured to be 3.85 millihenries. The internal resistance of that inductor, I mean of that motor, was 9.2 ohms. And keep in mind, let's call this L1 and L2. The inductance of L1, as I mentioned before, was measured to be 9.38 millihenries. So what we need to do is calculate the net inductance of the circuit. To do that, we need to determine if the inductors are in series with each other or if they are in parallel with each other. And with respect to the motor, when drawn this way, they appear to be in parallel with each other. So the total inductance of two inductors parallel to each other is going to be the product of L1 and L2 divided by the sum of those two inductors. So it's going to be 9.38 times 3.85 divided by 9.38 plus 3.85. And let's put this in parentheses. The total inductance that I got is 2.73 millihenries. So let me just rewrite that here. So now let's do the same for the capacitance of the circuit. So continuing the circuit, we have this part. Let's call this C1 and C2. So with respect to the motor, C1 and C2 appear to be in series with each other. To calculate the capacitance of two capacitors in series with each other, the formula is similar to two inductors that are parallel to each other. It's C1 times C2 divided by C1 plus C2. So let's go ahead and plug in the numbers. C1 was measured to be 960 microfarads. C2 was measured to be 209 microfarads. And then if you add the two, 900 plus 200 is 1100, and then 60 plus 9 is 69. So 960 times 209 divided by 1169 gives us a total capacitance of 171.6 microfarads. So now that we have the net capacitance and the net inductance of the circuit, we can calculate the frequency that the circuit should resonate at. So this is going to be 1 over 2 pi times the square root of L. That's 2.73 millihenries. Milli is 10 to the minus 3 and then times C, 171.6 microfarads, micro is 10 to the minus 6.
and I got a resonant frequency of 232.5 Hertz. Now let's talk about this figure. When I first tried this uh, experiment, I got an output frequency of 240 Hertz. And it makes sense to me why this happened. Because when I first tried, I had less wires that were coiled together. Because in the demonstration clip that I showed you, if you look at the wires, many of them were coiled up. The reason for this is so that I could show the experiment in a way that mirrored the circuit diagram so you could see the connections quickly and easily. But by coiling the wires, that changes the inductance of the circuit. And so in the demonstration, the output frequency was 260 hertz. But when I first tried it, I had less coiled wires and I had a measured frequency of 240 hertz, which was closer to the actual resonance of the, of the circuit. So we could see that a big deviation from this number and 232.5, a lot of it is due to the inductance of the coil wires that I had in uh, my demonstration clip. And there could be other things that can cause deviations in a circuit, such as uh, mutual inductance. But I think a bigger reason has to do with the many coiled wires that I had in uh, my demonstration. But nevertheless, now you know how to design a simple oscillator circuit using a motor, a resistor, two capacitors, an inductor, and a battery. Thanks for watching.